Very rare in the world you get an opportunity to edit the document, which is the city structure and form. And here we're presented with a, a chance to deal with all the issues that weren't working well prior to the earthquakes and actually rebuild the city better than it ever was. As part of the city recovery program, the river has been chosen as an anchor project and our task really is probably twofold. Look at the river and the health of the river and how it will sort of self-sustain in the future and survive. That's one of the, the key aspects. And the other aspect is all the urban public spaces that are hooked like, uh, like in a chain along the river um, to make them actually work really hard for the city and for the recovery process, as well as becoming the sort of spaces that people love to go to. Bringing people in is the core requirement for a thriving central city. So that's why we want to create uh, one of the great waterfronts in the world. What the earthquake has done for the river is it has given us a once in a lifetime opportunity to really do something about this river that we love so much. This is our one time to come in and make a difference. You know, turn this into something wonderful, restore it, protect it and have it there for our future generations. So while there's been a lot of tragedy out of the earthquake, there is a chance for the river to be reborn as a result. We could do some truly amazing things here for the river and we could do things that you just don't get the opportunity to do normally in an urban environment. Get to the bully. Here we have a uh, white bait. I'm Shelley McMurtry, I'm an aquatic scientist at EOS Ecology and I've spent the last 15 years studying Christchurch's waterways. The Avon River that we see today is vastly different to what it used to be like. This was a large wetland area and a Kahikatea forest. Over the years that Christchurch has been colonised, the river's changed a lot since that time. We have widened it, we have changed the vegetation on the banks to make it more easy for us to navigate and for us to live alongside. As a result of those changes, what we see living in the river today is also different to what would have been here. We have lost some of our iconic native birds, our tui and gereru, our bellbirds and so forth. We've lost some of our clean water invertebrate taxa and those are the little invertebrates that you only find in good quality water and good quality habitat. Now trout's an introduced species but they're very iconic to the Avon. Uh, back 40 years ago the Avon used to be known as the urban river to come to to see trout. So over the last 20 years we've had about an 80% decline in the trout spawning through the central city area. So if you extrapolate that out in another 10, 20 years, we'll have no trout spawning here. You know, we've lost that from our river. We still have a lot of our native fish. We have our native eels, our native bullies, the inaka or whitebait, and a range of other species. So we've still got reasonable diversity of fish but the numbers have dropped down a lot. So the bluegill bullies are tiny, they're the smallest bully, but they have this amazing electric blue just behind their gill, and they are fast water specialists. Mallard ducks are lovely, they look cute, and they're the one thing that people can interact with. But when you get large numbers of them, you know, they do a lot of pooing in the water, all of that organic matter has to be broken down by bacteria and it strips oxygen out of the water. It means that it's not technically that good to swim in, you wouldn't want to drink it. So if we can use riparian planting features to reduce the numbers of mallards, then that would really help. 
We've got a little native dark scorp, it's a little black one, and they don't seem to get to the same numbers. So the habitat that mallards don't like, scorp do like. So we're hoping to get more scorp through here instead. The whole idea for the design team was that ecology really does underpin the design. It is a cornerstone of this process. From an ecological point of view, we're going to have some great interventions which are going to make a huge difference. One of them is around enhancing the habitat values of the river. So that involves improving the water quality where we can by filtering the storm water that comes off the roads and so on through rain gardens before they feed into the river. Also the ecologists have come up with a great system for narrowing sections of the river, speeding up the water which sluices out the silt exposes the gravel, which is just the perfect habitat for trout to spawn. And those areas that are being narrowed, we're going to plant up, and that will provide shelter and habitat for the whitebait. We want to preserve all the exotic trees, which are a key part of the garden city, but we'd also like to supplement them, and the proposal is for the addition of the sorts of native trees which will provide habitat for the birds. We'd love to see the bellbirds come back. We'd love to see the bushbirds, the fantails, come back into the city. We've split the river up into three habitats. Riffle habitats, which is the habitat that we have here. It's that fast flowing water with the rippled surface. You can hear the water going along like a babbling brook type of sound. We also have run habitats and depositional areas that um, we will do things there as well to work into the bigger picture. Already we've seen in this small project that we've got, we've, we've given it a code name of Watermark, and down there adjacent in the area around the boat sheds, Antigua boat sheds, we've already starting to see the impact of speeding up the water, sluicing out the silt, exposing the gravel. We're using rocks that are rough and irregular, which means that we can create lots of little holes and backwaters. So here, there's this really nice deep hole in here. Now eels will just love to hang out in there. You can see the velocity's moving past in front of it. So it's a nice little backwater area where they'll be able to hang out and make quite a nice little home for themselves. This is not just a design job. All of the in-channel features here have to meet our criteria of ecological success. You know, nature's a funny thing. They can be a bit quirky about what works and what doesn't. And that's the advantage of having ecologists involved in this process so that we can make sure as we're going along that we're creating something that is going to work. One of the things we want to make Christchurch is a distinctive city. So we're not Singapore, we're not Auckland, we're not London, we're not New York, we're Christchurch. And part of Christchurch is our heritage the Naitahu heritage and our European heritage and the natural heritage that we have. So that we're, you know, you can see we're weaving the two together. We're weaving the trout and the whitebait, you know, the, the exotic trees and the native trees. What's happened so far in the project is, is that there's been a concept design developed. There has been a number of principles um, which have applied, one being about the healthy river, one about access and connectivity, one about weaving the stories of the cultures here in Christchurch together, and also providing economic catalysts for the area. The people of Christchurch said, hey, we want a compact city, we want a green city, we want a distinctive city, we want a great city to live in, to work in, to visit and to play, and we want an accessible city. And accessible means, and our understanding is, that it's easy and safe to get around for people of all ages and all abilities. OK, well, here's the concept plan that we've been evaluating. We have the promenade, which actually goes right through Victoria Square. It actually crosses uh, up to the playground and then right out to Avon Loop to Fitzgerald Ave. So it's a real linear sort of connection that we hope will not just be moving people but also allows those businesses and, and even residential activities and other things to sort of spill into that promenade. So it's a real important part of an inner city having that sort of public long space along the river. 
Well, we've earned the true right of the riverbank by the Antigua boat sheds, and what we've got here really is a very busy one-way system. This is going to be removed. This kind of traffic will not flow through here anymore. So the opportunity here is to bring that promenade in, that, that shared space for people. It's definitely dedicated to people um, moving by foot, <laughs> really. What the intended priority is, to, is to put pedestrians at the highest level. So some of the changes that will occur along the Avon River Precinct should definitely have an influence on driver behaviour, the way in which drivers actually come across and cross the river. We need to design the roads so that makes it quite difficult to travel far. So we narrow down the lanes as much as we can, provide alternative cycleways. So right now we're actually on the Source to Sea cycle way and um, this area here will have walking, cycling um, alongside each other, obviously separated but um, within visual distance. This is one of my favourite spots in here, with those trees creating that little avenue. Right in front of me is Durham Street Bridge, a, a very, very busy road, a one-way system that will remain a one-way system. The bridge is tall enough for people to, to kayak through easily, but it's also tall enough to walk through. So by creating a boardwalk that just slips underneath and, and then sets you up to walk towards the Bridge of Remembrance, and it's an amazing feature to look at. It, it really sets up the bridge as it should be seen. Hopefully the kids will go right through underneath without having to cross a busy road, and it's an experience in itself. The bridges will become Belvedere's viewing platforms, so people will be able to stand on those and view longer lengths up and down the Avon River. Through here is the what we are calling the terraces, which was the old strip. That's one of the areas that excites me. I think that we've got a great opportunity to actually enhance the area and make it better than it ever was. And really, there's a hotbed of activity with business, people, nature, all coexisting. The Bridge of Remembrance is associated with what we see on the other side of the river here, which is the Remembrance Park, or Park of Remembrance, with um, the soldier statue and looking towards the river and the bridge. And the idea here is to create an environment that's actually a lot softer. We want to retain that idea of, sort of tree canopy, dappled light. So there will be lots still left for people to recognise as it used to be, but there will be new things as well. And ideally we have a little area for a stage, so we have the ability for the two sides to really interact with each other. So that is the intention of this space, two spaces that work together as one, but have their own sort of identity within that. This is probably the most important heritage building that we have right along the river, the Canterbury Provincial Chambers. It's been damaged in the earthquake, the stone buildings have been damaged quite severely, but the wooden portions of the building are fairly intact and there is a move to rebuild it. The setting has changed dramatically from its first sort of built environment and what we want to do is just not replacing what was there in terms of giving it the same river setting, but actually honouring um, its space and, and making sure that new buildings adjacent to it actually move just slightly away from it and allow it to actually have some breathing space. Now Victoria Square has always had an important place in the history and activities of the city. It was used in the early days where the Naitahu people came and actually sold produce to the settlers. So it was, in those days it was known as Market Square. Victoria Square, that's one of our hearts to our city, along with Cathedral Square. So we want to make Victoria Square a great civic heart. With the Crown Plaza gone, it's now really the gateway into the central city It'll be the forecourt to a lot of what is our cultural heart. So it's really important we get that right and really important that we can bring people back to that space as well. I think this is going to be a great place that acknowledges some history, but it is forward-looking as well. And it'll become a place of welcome and it will symbolise some of the values of the Christchurch people about hospitality and looking after your guests and looking after the people who live here as well, you know. So we've just come across from um, Captain Cook and on that axis there is also the Edmunds Band Rotunda, a historic building which is currently in a, not a good shape at all but will be rebuilt. On that axis also sits the PGC building which has um, sadly collapsed and there were fatalities so quite a sensitive site to deal with within that sort of environment. 
but it's um, the rotunda and the new access with the bridge across um, give us a nice setting to actually provide a structure to the space and, and a space that can be a little bit more contemplative. The poplars are iconic, it's an amazing setting they have, it's an avenue that is just, they just frame the river and through those poplars there will be a bridge going across onto the new family park, the big playground. We want this to be a real great playground for all ages, from pre preschool children right up to grandparents. Big totra stumps have been found um, as part of the digging up foundations and things like that. And they are magical structures and, and we are thinking about pulling them out of the ground literally and using them as climbing structures or something that reflects that something that actually reconnects you with this place and, and it's, a, it's a process of learning so you come back each time and rediscover something new. Fundamentally what we're trying to achieve is the place where we'll invite people back into the central city because we want our central city to be thriving and bright, vibrant and economically successful again and we want to do that without bankrupting the country of course. We have a, a government that is standing beside our community and saying that we'll support you to actually redevelop and the council are helping and also there's a lot of local investors who are really keen to actually take part and participate in the rebuilding of the central city, either as developers, as establishing their businesses. You know, for some it can't happen quick enough. Good design takes account of the capital cost, the budget and the ongoing maintenance cost because we don't want to hand over a project when it's completed to the council that gives them unreasonable maintenance costs. We want to make sure that the materials we use, that we've selected them for their whole of life costs as well as the other practical functions you'd want to consider. A lot of the products that are going to be used within the Avon River Precinct are going to provide a distinctiveness particularly local stones, but these local stones will also provide a really high quality. Also the uses of timbers, the dimensions, the surfacing, will also provide a level of quality that the Avon River deserves. The planning regime has been modified to enable good plans to be implemented without unnecessary hurdles. If you look at the retail precinct, we've just now got outline development plans over all the land, and we've got people with the drive and the, and the money and the vision and the energy to actually see it through. Our designers have been talking with a lot of the key landowners and key developers who front along the river or, or just back from the river to make sure that we understand what those private landowners and developers are doing and they can understand what we're thinking about. If business is doing well, people are living in the core and are really, it's a vibrant place, it's a prosperous place, the businesses are sustainable, then I'll be happy. The frame is one block wide on average, which is 225 metres wide, and it really runs from the river in the north all the way down to High Street. We'd like to use a good proportion of that space to create inner city housing opportunities for people. So there's investment opportunities, development opportunities, and living opportunities. So we're right in the heart of the East Frame here, and right on the site actually where the news talk that the, um, the radio station building actually imploded as part of the demolition process, which is a fantastic event. There's a long history of this land, and we want to reveal some of that. And the idea there is to create a bigger green space that flows right from the river right down towards the Port Hills and it connects all these city blocks through that large green space which is the Central Park. The intention of the East Frame really is to support residential to move right into the heart of the city. It will really be second to none. You'll be within 200 metres, you know, of the Cathedral Square, performing arts, you know, almost that to the retail precinct, the transport interchange. You know, so we're talking like a two or three minute walk to the best assets of the city. What we're hoping is that East Frame will provide some amenity which will be an incentive to attract people to come and live on the east. The eastern part of the city I think is, has great potential. We're hoping that we can get a sense of community going you know, and a real, a true community 
on, in the east. And that, you know, that will be the final, um, I think, sign that we've done a good job if we, when we get people to, um, living over here in large numbers. In the heart of this green space sits stormwater system so that we can collect all the stormwater from the area in here and actually polish it while it runs through before it enters the river. So we're right back to the ecology that is at the front of, of this project that, that ultimately dictates or, or informs all our decision making around design. Physically the Avon River Precinct connects to the north of the East Frame with the playground and the intention is to, to bring a lot of the ecological principles and the, the connectivity of the connected pathways right through the centre of the East Frame. You can stand right in the middle of the open space of the East Frame and look down and see the river, the poplars that, that line the river, so there's a direct connection. We didn't really have a shortage of open space and we obviously had Hagley Park too, the, the primary open space in the city, so there's no real shortage if you like, but we didn't have open space in all the right places. It wasn't accessible enough for everybody. Prior to the earthquake there were six or seven thousand people living within the core of the city. Our aim is to have 20,000 people here, you know, and that's going to help the vibrancy. It's going to make it, we want to attract people of all ages to come and live here. We want to ensure that we start with the Avon River Precinct. It's because it sets the tone, it sets the standard that we're looking for, both in terms of design, but in terms of the effort and the quality of public realm and the objectives of creating more activity, more people and more reasons to come.